Hey guys and welcome to Performance Cars. So having had the Civic Type R FN2 two weeks ago, I felt that it was only right to have the Civic Type R EV3 today. So this is the Premier Edition made in 2005. So let's go take a look around. So we'll start off talking about the pre-facelift one compared to this facelift one. Uh, we have revised headlights, so these are HID ready. A different front grille with a larger Honda Type R badge. The two lower sections there, they are for optional fog lights. And a different front splitter. So down to the side we have 17 inch alloy wheels. These were also found on a pre-facelift. They are running 215-45-17s Avon ZV5 tyres with Brembo disc and pads and being a premier edition you also have the Type R embossed on the caliper. The facelift version also comes with these indicators on the mirrors and the owner has installed these JDM wind deflectors. You also get the Type R side skirts and this is finished in a Nighthawk black which is very reflective. You can just see me walking around the car down to the rear you also have revised rear lights so these have a clear style Lexus look I suppose Mugen twin loop so you can just see that the twin loop system down there and the owner has also installed a carbon fiber OEM style rear spoiler so you can just see the weave there it's very nice indeed so yeah let's take a look inside so being a premier edition, you get a few differences over the standard EP3. First and foremost, you have these red door cards. The owner has also wrapped this handle in carbon fiber, which is usually silver. You get a pair of Recaro trend lines, finished in black and red. And the theme continues with these black mats and red carpets just underneath. You also get a light and fly wheel in the gearbox. And we'll just have a quick look at the back. You have plenty of room for two rear passengers. Unfortunately, there's no third seat for another passenger. We also get a Momo Honda steering wheel. You get heated mirrors, which is a nice touch for the winter months. And the dials red line to 7,900 RPM and those distinctive white Type R dials with the Type R emblem on the right hand side just there. That's pretty nice. The center console finished in silver as well. This has the optional extra aircon. The shifter is located about a hand span away. So it should make shifting quite fast and easy. I'm looking forward to that later also get some storage down here type our badge with his designated number and if you slide it away you get space for two drinks holders and you can also slide that forward for some more space so there's quite a bit of space in here especially for storage and drinks you also get this nice section here maybe your phone or something like that so yeah let's take a look at the engine bay so from standard, this has a K20A2 engine. And as you can tell, the first modification he has done is this password JDM induction kit. And it is quite huge. It's taken up a lot of space. So much so that the battery has to be relocated down there. And I can tell you that battery is tiny. He also has a spoon sock covering the brake fluid reservoir. So this has 197 brake horsepower with 142 foot-pounds of torque. It's just one horsepower down on the FN2 as I mentioned when I did that video. And apart from this induction kit, it also has the Mugen twin loop catback exhaust system. So there's plenty of space in the boot. And underneath here you do have a spare wheel. And the rear seats also fold down just by undoing these latches here. So let's go for a test drive. Alright guys, 
right, so here we are inside the Civic Type R EP3. And oh my, what a VTEC crossover this has with that password JDM induction kit. It's really loud. I just drop down into third again, into second, so you guys can hear it. So I'm at 5,000 RPM. And this really picks up quickly. Wow, well, I, I never thought that I, I expected some lag should I say, or some heat soak because it's so close to the engine bay and everything's so hot inside there with no cold air feed but it's more or less responsive as soon as I put my foot down and that growl combined with that Mugen twin lube exhaust it really does sound nice but anyways upon entering this car compared to the EK9 and the FN2 uh, this one is easier to get into compared to the EK9. Uh, the seats are higher, you don't drop straight into the seat like the EK9. Uh, whereas compared to the FN2, it's quite similar. And these Recaro Trend Lines, also found in the Evo 6 and the Accord Type R. Yep, it feels exactly the same and it's just as comfy. It is not as body hugging as the, the ones found in the EK9 or the DC2. But these are really good for a long journey. So this is the first Civic Type R that was sold in the UK. Uh, the first one was the EK9 but that was never sold here. And then after we had the FN2 that I did the review on. Whilst this may only be one brake horsepower down from the FN2 which had 198. We only had 197 here and there. But it doesn't feel that way. Put your foot down, wait for the VTEC. Gosh, you can do this all day long. Really is so much fun. Round the corners like this bend here, the car is responsive. I believe they revised the steering, the electric power steering from the pre-facelift to this facelift model. And it does turn in as the steering wheel is moved a little bit. That's quite nice as well. So this Civic Type R is the owner's daily, hence why he went for the Brembo disc and pads. I suppose there is no point going for a more race orientated one because he'll never get the disc and the pads up to operating temperatures on those. But this is just fine. I mean, if we stamp on the brakes. Okay, the road was a bit uneven, so the car did twitch a bit, but it stopped really well. And this car only weighs a little bit less than the Civic Type R FN2 but it really is responsive and agile. Having that gear shifter there, remember I said it was a hand span away, really makes gear changes nice and easy. I mean, a lot of MPVs nowadays, those people carriers, they do have them in the center and quite high up as well, but this one doesn't seem like one of those people carriers. It's nice and easy to drive. Unfortunately, being a UK model EP3, this doesn't come with an LSD in the gearbox either. So just like the FN2, but whilst we're coming up to some corners, we can do some comparison between the two. Turn in. Just a little bit of understeer. But that's expected in a front wheel drive car. And it responds well to my inputs. I'm starting to see why people prefer the EP3 over the FN2. These are also on IBAC. Pro Sport Springs, uh, they lowered about 30 mil, so not a major drop, and it does have a bit more firmness to it, but it's not something where it's rattling your teeth out. So it's the gearbox has six gears, just like the FN2, and the ratios are really close. You hit VTEC, look down, and you're more or less at the red line, and if you keep going, you more or less have to do that all the time. Okay, we did get a bit of body roll in here, but this is more or less a standard car, so we're not expecting no race car cornerings here. But I'm having a lot of fun. Makes it more enjoyable. The heel and toe is also nice and easy to do in here. Third gear, turn in and back on the power. So the combination of the Password JDM induction kit and the Mugen Twin Loop, both of them together doesn't give a super loud raspy exhaust. This one is a more deep tone one 
and if you drop it into sixth gear and just cruise along it's quite enjoyable having driven both the FN2 the EK9 and the EP3 yes the EK9 is very raw it's the VTEC crossover in standard form is very noticeable uh, in the EP3 the car is much heavier than the EK9 and you can feel this but it compensates that by having a 2 litre VTEC engine and with the FN2 it's heavier it has that one extra brake horsepower but it does feel slightly slower and round corners as well it does feel a little bit more sluggish but I wouldn't say that it's so bad that you can't call it a Type R So a standard Civic Type R EP3 weighs in about 1,240. We have this one in at 1,207 kilograms. I can see that this car will become a future classic. So if you can get your hands on one now, especially a premier edition with low miles, then I would suggest you do so. I want to say a big thank you to Vince for letting me drive his Civic Type R EP3 premier edition today. It really is clean, low mileage, and easy to drive with these mods. So don't forget to comment, like and subscribe, stay safe, drive safely and I'll see you guys soon. So today we are heading down to Devil Development down in Littlehampton. It's about an hour and a half away but we are going down there for their dyno sessions. 